Hello and welcome to my video. I'm here to discuss more about the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act. That's the policy that I chose. Um, my name is Duncan Nakara. Let's begin. So in order to understand the reason behind this act, you gotta understand the epidemic of the opioid overdose. In the United States, since 1999 to 2017, there have been more than 700,000 cases that people have died from the drug overdose. Around 68% of the 70,000 drug overdose deaths in 2017 was because of an opioid. In 2017, these number of uh, number of overdose deaths involving opioids was about six times higher than it was in 1999. This means on an average, 130 Americans die every day from an opioid overdose. In order to better understand the epidemic, we gotta look at three ways that happen that's causing these overdose, uh, opioid overdose deaths. First wave began in 1999, where there was a high, high rise in prescription op opioid overdose deaths, as you can see in this thing. And then began the second rise, second wave, which was in 2010, where there was a rise in heroin overdose deaths. Lastly, in wave three, it's the wave that we are currently in. In 2013, there's a high rise in synthetic opioid overdose deaths, which include tramadol, fentanyl, pres prescription, and or illegally, illicitly manufactured drugs. In 2017, there was an age-adjusted rate of drug overdose, which was 9.6% higher than the rate in 2016. And as a result, we found that the ages 25 through 54 was the highest rate of drug overdose deaths in 2017 than the other ages. As you can see it in compare and contrast here with the, the, the ages that I listed compared to the other ages. So the strategy of the CARA or Comprehensive Addiction CARA Act, uh, Recovery Act, is that it was gonna help increase uh, funding. It was about $181 million that was used for funding this, these for, this uh, areas and strategies. It was passed by the Senate and the House and they both had different bills, but this is the commonalities that they found. Um, that was the same themes were used to um, elicit in terms of showing, in terms of showing um, what necessary changes are needed. So comprehensive abuse, uh, opioid abuse grants was supposed to help with different programs, such as the drug prescription drug monitoring programs, um, medication assisted treatment programs, and many others. Others, uh, other test strategies was to evaluate the performance of these new grant programs, making sure that they are on the right track and that they can evaluate themselves. This bill was also was also going to include the imp importance of the mental health and substance abuse in veterans who are at high risk of substance abuse. Various provisions were was made in the criminal justice, and lastly, one of the ma major changes was. Um, the availability of naloxone to the first responders, making sure that these first responders get the appropriate training for naloxone administration, as well as it was ready and available for them and all the other law enforcement officials due to this epidemic. The evaluated criteria. So politically, many states have already taken the matter into their own hands by simply taking actions for the to fight against the opioid overdose, one of one of the examples is Washington. It became the second state to allow legal possessions of naloxone to anyone at risk of having or witnessing an opioid overdose crisis. This was back in 2012, 2013, and as you can see, the Car Act came into play in uh, 2016, so it's way before, and and they really recognized the the emergence. Of the uh, of this epidemic and try to resolve the situation and reduce the burden. And federal government, although they were they were not really taking seriously all these uh, opioid crises, hopefully this bill uh, was uh, was shown to uh, shown to promise a lot of new things for um, helpful helpful for many people in regions of the country and help fight the cause. Epidemiologically speaking. 
uh, number of ER visits from opioid overdose has increased from 35% by 35%. And as you can see, the highest increase was found in Wisconsin, Illinois, Delaware, Pennsylvania. So in uh, one of the things that CARA did not do is the fact that it did not enhance the state opioid overdose um, surveillance, which is important in, in recognizing where the funding is needed the most in each state. Economically speaking, the estimated uh, total economic burden reduction is 208, 277 million, 560 million, 654 million, respectively. And out of this, the net benefit was only supposed to be about 156 million over at 7% over five years. However, there's always been unforeseen, uh, unforeseen consequences that government will face and an action plan is needed as a fail safe to employ a successful launch of this act. Ethically speaking, doctors will be able to provide people with opioids who is an absolute necessity due to the restrictions placed by the government. But at the same time, they will only be able to provide opioids to those people in need. Um, that makes it difficult for doctors because some t a, lot of the, a lot of the times, um, many versions, the newer versions of these acts have good restriction in manufacturing as well. And that's been a problem lately. Uh, this also means that less a number of patients in the rural area will be given the necessary drug needed. When you compare uh, physician shortage in the rural area, we realize that there's less people, uh, less, less physicians and more patients, which means that number of prescriptions will be relative, relatively higher compared to the uh, places where like if it's a suburban or hospital or urban areas. Legally speaking, there's more restrictions that forbids doctors to prescribe opioids easily to prescription drug monitoring programs. Secondly, people that uh, travel for work and take prescription drugs for their chronic illnesses, they could be at, um, at a disadvantage as with the pharmacy and prescription lock-in programs, they will only be able to get drugs from, from that one one pharmacy and that one prescriber. Alternatives to this treatment is 20, 21st uh, Century Secures Act of 2016 and Addiction Treatment um, Access Improvement Act of 2017. Cures Act was uh, implanted um, as well into a law around the same time as the CARA Act, but their plan was to use the funds that they received into more of a community specific action to fight against addiction. They provided funds to each state instead of providing it to the entire country. And this, and in addition, they also provided funding towards uh, cancer related research in trying to fast forward the speed of trying to find a cure for life, life ending illness and this way reduce the uh, opioids in these patients. Addiction of treatment, ATAI was used. Uh, it's, been, um, it's one of the acts that revises the administration, dispensing and prescribing narcotic drugs by extending the eligibility status to non-practitioners. Non um, the problem with CARA was the fact that with people who, uh, in order to treat the pregnant women and infants who are affected by prenatal substance exposure, nurse practitioners and physician assistants were able to prescribe, but they were not, um, but the certified nurse midwives and certified midwives were unable to prescribe that same medication. Same medication. As a result, um, ATAI came into play where it's able to revise this problem and actually allow these midwives to have access to this medication and provide to these, um, to these mother and babies as they end up spending most of the time anyways with, the, with, the, with these patients. <clears throat> Recommendations. For, uh, for CARA is creating alternative and affordable treatment options. Addiction is a disease and that needs to be decriminalized as well. And so that's another recommendation that's needed. And lastly, um, this law needs to find a balance between providing necessary medicine to the ones in need versus restricting the opioid abuse. With the cap number on the, with the cap on the number of the physicians, people that a physician can prescribe, that creates a barrier in uh, areas 
where physician shortage and ratio of physicians to patients are, uh, are low. In this case, it would be low. With the growing elderly population, this becomes a, um, another factor because if you have a higher number of population in the chronic age, they end up using more opioid drugs for the chronic illnesses. As a result, we gotta adjust the law based on the circumstance that the patient needs it. In conclusion, this act is only a beginning to the end the epidemic of opioid overdose, and it has shown promise. With improvising on its policies through its evaluation of its programs, we can eventually create a highly effective system to end this opioid overdose death crisis. And these are my references, and these are more references. Thank you so much.